Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching The Political Vigilante and listening on the iTunes. My name is Graham Elwood. I've got some tour dates coming up. All of the tour dates are at GrahamElwood.com, which is in the link below. But I'm doing the first ever live Political Vigilante at the Los Angeles Podcast Festival. That whole weekend is October 6th through the 8th. Jimmy Dore is doing a show there. The Dollop. There's a bunch of other shows going on there. Doug Loves Movies and such. Um, check those out. So I'll be performing Political Vigilante Saturday, October 7th. And then I've got some road dates in October. I'm headlining the Punchline in San Francisco, October 10th. I'm headlining Helium in St. Louis, October 11th. And October 12th through the 14th, I am headlining the Zanies in St. Charles, Illinois at the Pheasant Run Resort. All of that is at GrahamElwood.com below. The Patreon link is below as well. I want to talk about there was an interview um, by uh, Mendy Hassan of Bernie Sanders. And they, they, he put the excerpts of the interview and uh, with Bernie Sanders. And the article is basically called Bernie Sanders to Democrat. This is what a radical foreign policy looks like. Um, it's, it's a pretty decent interview. And obviously he, this, the, the journalist goes into some points about Bernie Sanders, one of which was he took a hit in the 2016 primary about not being good on foreign policy. And they referenced the fact that he didn't have foreign policy up on his website during the campaign until a couple months in. And, and that was the thing people really went after um, is that he didn't know enough about foreign policy and, and Hillary Clinton knew a lot about foreign policy. But what, <laughs> if anything can show us, is that Hillary Clinton was involved in taking this country from two wars to seven as Secretary of State. She also voted for the war in Iraq as a senator, voted for the Patriot Act. And I think a lot of people, and Trump came in and said, I'm done with these wars, I'm an outsider, I'm an outsider. Now, many of us heard Trump speak and went, wow, this guy's crazy, he's saying xenophobic, racist stuff. But his, I'm an outsider, I wasn't gonna buy that for a second because he's a, he's a billionaire and billion, there's no billionaires that are outsiders. So, but it did resonate with enough voters, maybe some of those people that voted for Obama twice that then voted for Trump, and the fact that he said, I didn't want to do any wars. Now, we've obviously seen, and I've talked about on this show, how Trump has completely abandoned the majority of his uh, campaign promises. Aside from banning Muslims and the wall, he has happily bombed us in Syria. He's sending more troops to Afghanistan, you know, like on and on, giving money to the Saudis, all that stuff. But, you, but um, this is pertinent because is Sanders, this, this journalist is wondering, many people are, is Sanders going to run again in 2020? Will he run as a Democrat? Will he run as an independent of which he is? Um, so uh, it also talks about this speech that he gave, um, his foreign affairs speech at Westminster College in Fulton, Missouri, part of the Green Foundation Lecture Series. Um, just a little uh, backstory. Winston Churchill gave a sinews of peace speech at Westminster College, um, and he introduced the world the concept of the Iron Curtain. Uh, Gorbachev gave his very memorable 1992 account of how the Cold War ended was also part of this series. Um, so before he gave the speech, he sat down with this this uh, journalist, and that um, I think. For whatever, I mean, Sanders is talking. He's talking more foreign policy, and that was his sort of weak weak spot. I would argue that the best foreign policy would be strengthening America with uh, paying for college and uh, single payer health care and a good minimum wage and <laughs> cutting the military budget is just right there is great foreign policy, and not bombing everybody in the Middle East is a pretty good foreign policy. Um, as just was happened, and uh, Jimmy Dore reported on this on an episode that I'm on, you know, they just approved, Trump was asking for like another $55 billion to the military budget. They gave him, the Senate gave him $80 billion. Bernie Sanders was one of nine people that didn't vote for it. A bunch of Democrats voted in favor of giving Trump $80 billion. Kamala Harris being one of them, Tim Kaine being another. So I'm not as critical of, of, of Bernie Sanders' uh, quote, lack of foreign policy because his foreign policy is more like get us out of there and stop spending all of this money and spend money at home. Because we're bombing people in the Middle East. Guess what? We're not creating terrorists. We're not creating refugees. Oh, look at that. So um, here, um, 
what he said in this uh, before this speech what Bernie Sanders said. I think what we have to do is take a hard look at where we are today in terms of foreign policy and where we have been for many years. Um, and I think the main point is to be made that no country, not the United States or any other country, can do it alone. That if we're going to address the very deep and complicated international issues that exist, we need to do it in cooperation. Um, many of my colleagues, Republican colleagues here in the Senate, for example, disparage the United Nations. Uh, while clearly the United Nations would be more effective, it is imperative that we strengthen international institutions because at the end of the day, while it may not be sexy, it may not be glamorous, it may not allow for great sound bites, but simply the idea of people coming together and talking and arguing is a lot better than countries going to war. <laughs> uh, that sounds like pretty good foreign policy to me. Hey, let's talk this out rather than bomb each other and kill poor people and and spend money on military so that our own infrastructure doesn't get taken care of. I'm down with that. Um, the senator makes clear that unilateralism, the belief that we can simply overthrow governments that we don't want, this has got to be re-examined. Of course, he's referencing the Iraq war. One of the great foreign policy blunders in the history of this country. Um, the senator touches on another historic blunder, which to his credit, few of his fellow senators would be willing to discuss, let alone critique. In 1953, the United States with the British overthrow um, Mohammad Mosadi, the prime minister of Iran, and this was to benefit British oil interests. 1953, he's talking about. He reminds me, the result was the Shah came into power, who was a ruthless man, and the result was that we had the Iranian revolution, which takes us to where we are right now. I don't know, that seems pretty astute foreign policy-wise. He's showing how, I mean, if you look at the, our, the United States lineage in the Middle East and specifically Iran, it's unbelievable. We overthrow this guy, then the Shah comes in, and then, of course, we back Saddam in the Iran-Iraq war in the 80s. It's insane. Um, <laughs> uh, so it really, it really goes on... Um, the, the the article it's it's very lengthy and the interview with him um, I would suggest reading it because it also kind of shows that the most of his like oh he's not good on foreign policy was kind of more just part of the Clinton campaign the attack and some from the Republicans about oh he doesn't know what he's doing he's just this old hippie independent from in Vermont but here's some some other stuff uh, since 1991 Sanders has served in Congress as a member of the House and then the Senate debating and voting on military action foreign treaties trade deals arms sales international aid and climate change agreements um, Few critics have paused to consider the fact that as President Sanders would have arrived in the White House in January 17 with far more foreign policy experience under his belt than Obama, George Bush, and Bill Clinton. And of course, reality TV star Donald Trump. Um, but here's what did. So Sa Sanders um, is uh, just hired Matt Duss, a, f a respected foreign affairs analyst and former president of the Foundation of Middle East Peace as his foreign policy advisor. And this guy has given speeches at the Jewish lobbying group J Street, where he condemned Israel's continued occupation of Palestinian territories as being contrary to fundamental American values. So I think, um, and there's good stuff in here about uh, Glenn Greenwald talking about uh, Clinton's book tour and all this stuff like that. It's, 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 a, it's a really good read. It also goes into how... Um, what Jeremy Corbyn has done, and and it was it was uh, it was um, Corbyn who said, "Be brave enough to admit the war on terror is simply not working." And I think it's uh, it's interesting. So over the course of this whole hour, I'll, I'll summarize with this. Um, in this interview, uh, Senator Sanders offered an unashamedly progressive diplomacy-oriented, non-militarized vision of U.S. foreign policy for the 21st century. The goal is not for the United States to dominate the world. Our goal should be global engagement based on partnership rather than dominance. Wow. I would like to see that. And this is what he says. I'll close with this, Sanders. 
quote from the interview. Where we've got to be radical is to understand that we cannot continue with simply using military as a means of addressing foreign policy issues. Where we have got to be radical and forceful is an unprecedented way is to force debate and discussion on the causes of internal international conflict. And certainly we have not been doing that and we need more American leadership to do that. Still the most popular politician and I am glad that he's doing this. I'm glad he's fighting for Medicaid for all. I'm glad he voted against giving um, Trump 80 billion more. Now we have spent $700 billion on military. It was during the campaign too, where Bernie Sanders said for about 45 or 50, something like $65 billion, he could, that could pay for free college at community colleges and state universities. That's how much it would cost. We could have, so for $80 billion, we could have had free college tuition, but nope, more into our military budget that is, we outspend the next seven countries. <laughs> it's insane. And I'd like to hear more of Bernie Sanders saying this. I want to hear more progressive, just flat out stop. We, oh, we can't go, we can't be bad against war. Let's say that we're against war. Let's say that we're in favor of supporting our veterans by not bringing more of them home uh, in flag draped coffins or with PTSD and um, permanent physical and mental injuries. Let's do that. The best thing for our foreign policy is getting out of this endless war that we've been in, in seven, eight countries, wherever we're at, bombing everybody. Thanks for watching, support the show.